Hey, church family, when, welcome to Wednesday night refire service, amen? We are going to continue our teaching in John tonight, so I hope you got your Bible. I hope you got a pen, get you a little bit of communion, some grape juice and a wafer, and we'll receive communion as we pray for the church body, amen? So let's go ahead and open up our service in prayer, and then we'll enter right into thanksgiving and praise to Almighty God. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this new day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you tonight that we've come to celebrate Jesus on this December 2nd, Wednesday night. We've come to magnify the King in Jesus' name. Amen.
better than you, oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you.
Thank you for this time of praise and worship that we could celebrate our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your love towards us. We love you because you first loved us. Church family, if you have a prayer request, go ahead and put them in comments there. If it's private, please send it to Rev Bob at cffchurch.org or call the church up at 973 209 Seven seven eight six. We have the prayer request from Sunday with us. So go ahead and stretch your hands out towards the camera there, towards your TV set, whichever, whatever you have there, and then we'll receive communion right afterwards. Father, we lift up all the prayer requests that have come in on Sunday. We pray for our brothers and sisters, Lord, for needs, so many for healing, so many fear of the COVID, Lord, so many different things for the election, Lord. That's, go, that's still going on, Lord. All that's happening in our world, we lift these up before you and we pray, Almighty God, that your will will be done. We know that you are the Lord that heals us. We know that you are the Lord that provides. You said you have given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we pray over these prayer requests. Lord, we lift up this contested election again and we just pray, thy will be done. That's all we want, Lord. We're trusting you, Father, to do what's best for our nation while we're still here on planet Earth, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you that Scripture must be fulfilled, and it will be fulfilled, Lord, according to your word. Now, Father, we come to receive communion. You got that little wafer there? Hold it up in the air. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, we give you thanks, Lord. He break it. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Church family, say this with me. I thank you, my Lord Jesus, for your broken body. It is for my healing, my family's healing. I thank you. That by your stripes, by the beatings that you bore and the lashes that fell upon your back, we receive your healing now. In Jesus' name, amen.
In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he returns. Say this with me. I thank you, my Lord Jesus, for your shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Your blood was shed for the remission of my sins. I thank you that by your stripes I was healed and by your blood I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that you have said in your word, the righteous are as bold as lions. The wicked flee when no one pursues them. I thank you that you said in your word, that we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, church family. God is good. Well, hello. Welcome to CFFC Online. I'm Brandy, and I want to welcome you to our Wednesday evening service. So every service here at CFFC, we say our vision together. So let's go ahead and do that. So we are a praying church. We are a going church, and we are a life-changing church, and we are reaching and impacting people with the love of Jesus. Just a few announcements. This Sunday is step two. If you took a membership class or the step one class, this is the second step in the four-part series. This just talks about disciplines in your walk with the Lord. It's one of my favorite classes, so you can sign up right on the CFFC app or on our website. Also, teens, they're going to be having girls and guys only night. That's going to be December 9th at 7 p.m. So you want to mark your calendars, parents. They have a great time together, so don't forget to bring your teens out. 7 p.m. December 9th. Hey, church family, you might be wondering why I got that T-shirt on, these sneakers on. Well, I'll tell you why. We are decorating this building. You know why that is? Because Christmas isn't canceled this year. Pastor Tom's going to be starting a new series this Sunday called Christmas Isn't Canceled. And by the way, our schedule of services for Christmas Eve, we have four services, which is going to allow us to socially distance. We want to make sure everybody can come. So we're going to be having four services, all the same service. So starting on December 23rd at 4 p.m., we're going to have a Christmas Eve service. Now at that service, there will be no children's church. But then on December December 23rd, the same night, 6 p.m., there will be children's church and there will be adult service right here. December 24th, we will have a 3 and a 5 p.m. service and there will be children's church for both of those services. So we're getting geared up for Christmas. We're excited. It's not canceled this year. We want to see you here this Sunday, 9 and 11 a.m. Thanks for joining us, church family. Hey guys, let's continue our worship tonight by the giving of his tithes and our offerings because we are a giving church, amen? Here's the ways that you can give. Click donate at cffchurch.org or the link on this video. You can give on the CFFC app. You can text the amount to 84321 or mail your check or cash to 3188 Route 94, Franklin, New Jersey, 07416. The scripture verse I have for you tonight is Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 through 9a. And this is from NIV. If anyone is poor among you, your fellow Israelites, in any of the towns of the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need. Be careful not to harbor this wicked thought. The seventh year, the year of cancellating, cancellating debts is near so that you do not show ill will toward the needy among your fellow Israelites and give them nothing. This verse is pretty cool, you know. Uh, it's really instructions for the Israelites on how to treat the poor. And did you really notice that seventh year of cancellation? You know, that's what God commanded of the Israelites. Every seven years, they had to forgive the, the people that owed them money. Can you imagine that? Spend seven, pay seven years for your mortgage and that's it. Bank says, you're done. That'd be great. But you know, God doesn't say that. He also says this to him, don't be tight-fisted. He said, don't look at it like, hey, that's a bad business decision if I lend this money out now because next year, 
He gets to cancel his debt. No, God says to give to the poor anyway. You know, this principle is still true for us today. You know, when we give to the poor, we shouldn't be looking for anything in return. We shouldn't be expected to see that money anymore. And you know, when you give to this church, there's a part of the budget that goes for the needy. You know, so when you're giving in this church, it goes to the needy as well. You know, you should be open-handed, as God said. And, you know, so we thank you guys for your generosity that we can be open-handed to, to people here maybe in our community or someone around the world. We could be doing that for them. That's great, right? Amen. Let's pray. Father, as we give to you today, Lord, we give with open hands and open hearts, Father. Father, we give because you canceled a great debt for us, Father God, and we want to give thanks to you. We want to be obedient to your word, Father, because, Lord, we know that this offering will be blessed then, and, Lord, you will reach others for your name's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, church family, you ready to get into the Word? Come on, get your Bibles out or turn your Bibles on. Get a little piece of paper. You wouldn't, just, even just writing the verse down or one or two thoughts just brings it to memory so much stronger, amen? So let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for the Word. We thank you that your Word does not return void, but it accomplishes that which it's sent forth to do. We thank you for this time that we can eat together, Enjoy together, have an appetizer, have a main course, have a dessert in your word, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So last week, you remember, we were in service here. So two weeks ago is where we stopped, and we stopped on, on at, we ended with John chapter 17 and verse 5. So we're going to pick up on John chapter 17 and verse 6. So if you want to go ahead and turn there. And this, this scripture is loaded. It's loaded. Here we go. I have manifested your name to the men to whom you have given me. Now that word manifest there means to reveal or make himself known. Jesus said that he has come to make God, Abba, the Father, known to us, church family. And that's there because if you read the Old Testament... Without the eyes of the New Testament, God can seem like a very harsh, very demanding, very judgmental, going to smite you for every little mistake you made. But when you start seeing God through the eyes of Jesus, he who has seen me, Jesus said, has seen the Father. And here he says, I have revealed, I have manifested, I have shown your, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. And that's what we're doing. Again, Jesus is praying right here for his disciples. You're going to see in verse 20, he's going to shift around, and he's going to be praying for us. Amen? So let's continue on. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. So all things which you have are given to us are from Almighty God. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. Words came from Almighty God. They were given to Jesus, and Jesus gave them to us. Amen. That's the revelation of the Word of God. The Word of God, think about it. Some of the Bible has now been preserved for uh, about 4,000 years, you know, so forth and so on. When people say, ah, oh, this, this book you have is inaccurate, <laughs> I laugh. It shows such ignorant on, ignorance on their part. Or it shows that they don't want to check things out. Because archaeologists, you, you remember the story in 1948, a little shepherd kid was out, one of his sheep kind of ran away, he threw a rock, he heard some pottery break, went inside, found a whole bunch of pottery and, and leather things inside. He tried to sell them, he sold them went to a shoemaker and stuff like that as leather. And, and then all of a sudden they looked at it and they saw that this was one of the biggest archaeolog uh, archaeologist uh, uh, discoveries ever. They found the books of the Bible preserved I mean, some of them are, be, you know, beat up after sitting in there for 2,000 years. But they found the entire book of Isaiah, and it was word for word. Well, remember, it's in Hebrew how they found it. 
and it was preserved for what we have today. That's amazing. And I, I don't know, you just go on YouTube and, and uh, turn in the Watchman Station. They are constantly finding new archaeological digs. They just found one the other day, a house that they know was during the Babylon invasion. They can see where the house caved in, where the fire was. They, they found a, a, a the things where they call it, when they put them in wax, on and on. Our Bible is so real, guys, and it's being proved. Proven. That's why it says a fool says in his heart there is no God. If a person that doesn't believe would take some time to study it themselves, to check into the archaeological digs, to look at Israel becoming a nation in 1948, all these other miracles that have happened. They have, in Saudi Arabia, they have found the rock that was split. Well, how do they know that's the rock? Because here's this rock, this massive boulder. It's got this big cut down the center. And at the bottom, it shows that water actually, you know, eroded the bottom. Sodom and Gomorrah has been discovered. They believe it's where the Dead Sea is today. And I, I can go on and on, but I don't have to prove it to you guys. You know that the word of God is true. But Jesus is saying here, for I have given to them the word which you have given me that they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. I'm one of them disciples, amen. I know he's talking to Peter, James, John, and Thomas and so forth and so on. But I'm a believer. I believe the Bible is God's word. It's God's, it's a supernatural book. It is a treasure that has been preserved now. Hitler tried to get rid of it. Stalin tried to get rid of it. Marxism tried to get rid of it. Some people in our government are trying to get rid of it. But you know what? It's still here, amen, church family? There it is, as beautiful as can be. And you know what? <clears throat> What's so cool is now electronically, it is just going forth like never before. I believe that the U version, I could have my numbers wrong, but over a billion downloads of the U version, it's now getting into nations that couldn't come before. Because people make statements like, well, you know, the rapture can't happen because uh, Jesus said this gospel shall be preached to all nations as a witness and then the end will come. Let me tell you something. This Bible has been in all nations now. It's getting in places it has never been before. The rapture could happen. Hey, this broadcast might go on, but nobody will be there because the Lord returned. Hey, church family, come on. We are looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. Oh, pastor, every time you preach, you're always going to bring that in. I would be doing a disservice to you and to Almighty God if I didn't bring out the blessed hope of the return of our Jesus. It is our blessed hope, church family. It's not escapism. It's the Lord coming back and bringing, him, bringing us back to him, restoring things that for the way they should have been from the very beginning, right? Verse 9 and 10. And he, Jesus is praying. He says this, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are ye, yours, and all is mine and yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. So what he's saying here is he's not praying for the world right now. He's praying for these disciples. Through these men, 11, you know, Judas fell. But remember, there were other followers. There were 500 that saw him, ascend, that saw him while he was alive. Many saw him ascend. The, the day of Pentecost, on and on. There was Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Madeline, on and on with those that had the word of God. And this group of carpenters, of fishermen, a tax collector, on and on, changed the known world. How does that happen? How does that happen unless it's supernatural? And the supernatural I mean is the word of God. Because the word of God does not return void. When these guys, these ladies were speaking these words, when Paul comes on the scene and he, he, he the, the, the Roman Empire was flipped upside down because of uh, this apostle Paul, Saul who became Paul. 
It is truly miraculous how this word of God has survived. Yeah, I know this counterfeits out there. Well, what about this book and what about that book? No book has, su has had such an influence on mankind towards good than the holy word of God. No book. It changes heathen nations into godly people. It makes men respect women. It, it teaches people how to raise their children right. And I can go on and on what the word of God has brought to a civilization. The reason America is blessed today is because our founding fathers based this nation on Judea Christian principles or the word of God. They want to say our our forefathers, you know, the, the George Washingtons and all, they weren't religious people. Well, then they should read some of their writings because, dear Lord, they were constantly talking about uh, Almighty God, the Sovereign One, on and on. And it's so, Abraham Lincoln, right? Holy cow, that man who ended slavery, what he went through. Isn't it amazing the presidents that go through just piles of, of attacks left and right are the ones that God uses the greatest, amen? I mean, George Washington, they say in his jacket, were like bullet holes. Just, God's hands were upon him. God's hand were, was upon the Abraham Lincoln. I believe God's hand is upon our president, and God is doing great things, a amen? So let's continue on here. Verse 11, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, Keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are one. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus is saying he's going to the right hand of God, but yet we're going to be one with him. And that, that's the concept of that, that we're one with him. The most intimate person on planet earth in my life is my wife. The Bible says that a husband and wife are one flesh. And it's talking about that intimacy of oneness and, and that you have in, in sexual relationship, but also in just your whole lives. Everything you do, you, you become like one person. And here he's saying that we are one with him. Spirit to spirit, lover of my soul. When I'm down, he's there. When I'm up, He's there. He's my Jesus. One more time, I'm going to read that. I am no longer in the world, but th these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those who you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. He wants us to be one with him as he was one with the Father. Let me ask you a question. What would that do to your prayer life? What would that do to your relationship with God? If you start thinking, I am one with him, the intimacy that I have had with my wife or my husband in the flesh, I can have that intimacy in spirit with God. To me, it's mind-boggling, mind-boggling. Eyes have not seen nor ears heard what God has in store for us. Look, we still contend with this flesh and this soul. Our spirit is perfect in him. But there's a day coming that that's going to be put aside and we're going to truly be one with him. That's why eyes have not seen nor is heard nor is entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for him. It's just going to be beyond words. Let's continue on. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those who you gave me I've kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, and his name is Judas. We know that. And I just wonder sometimes if Judas could have repented himself. He went and hung himself, but could he have repented? I I'm not sure, guys. And then that next part, and I say it over and over, that the scripture might be fulfilled. I believe Esau had a right to repent. I believe Hitler had a right to repent. And I believe Judas had a right to repent, but he chose not to. 
and scripture must be fulfilled. And many people say, well, yeah, God wrote it and God said, Judas, you're the one. You're going to go to hell for all eternity because I chose you to do that. No, I don't believe that. The scripture is very clear when you look at the heart of Judas. He was stealing money in the, in the, uh, the, the treasury that day. He was the treasurer of Jesus' ministry. On and on, his heart led him that way for the 30 pieces of silver. And then when that conviction came on him, he could have fallen on his knees like Peter did. Peter denied the Lord three times. Peter could have went and hung himself. Let's go back to that statement that the scripture must be fulfilled. Church family, scripture must and will be fulfilled. And I know you hear me say that often, but it's a, something you got to get in your mind. America is not an end time prophecy. There's a reason for that. America will be swallowed up by the, they call it the great reset now, but it used to be called the one world order. When, when all of this comes together and the antichrist truly comes on the scene, John said there are many antichrists in the world. We understand that. Antichrist means anti-God, anti-Jesus Christ. But this one Antichrist is going to be possessed by Satan himself. And he's going, remember the scripture says that the devil went inside Judas. This Antichrist will have the devil inside him. And there will be a great reset that goes on in our world. And people will follow this guy to their own destruction. Amen? We're getting close to that point. You could see it. Look what's going on. Look what 2020 has been. 2020 has been a, to me, it's been a test year. It's been a year where they say, will they obey this? Will they follow this? Will they do this? Will they do that? And, and we did. We did. All of us did. Put the mask on, you know, go into quarantine. Do this, do that. It's supposed to only last two weeks. And here we are, what, eight or nine months? No, not nine months, seven or eight months later, and we're still in that. I thank God we're meeting in church. I thank God that we're having church services again. And I thank God that we were able to take a bad situation and meet out in the parking lot and then start renting a tent and buying a tent that we had services. We didn't miss any services. We kept them going. And I, I, I prophesy we're just going to keep them going until that trumpet sounds. I hope it sounds sooner. Scripture must be fulfilled. Europe will become what it is. Israel, can a, can a nation be born in a day? Israel, night, May, uh, is it 14th? I'm not sure on that, 18th, 1948. Born in a day, one day. Who thought of such a thing? Almighty God, he wrote it down thousands of years before. Who thought of such a thing? A Messiah would come into the world. He'd be born in Bethlehem. He'll, he'll be born of a virgin. He'll be called a Nazarite. He'll come out of Egypt. Wise men will bring him gifts. On and on. Who thought of such a thing? Church family, I want to be like the children of Issachar. I want to understand the times and the seasons. We are in the most interesting time of all humanity right now. And I don't think things are going to get better. I think they're going to get a lot crazier out there. I think December and January are going to be pretty wild months. But we're going to stay in rest. We're going to stay in peace. And we're going to stay in prayer. And as you pray, God will give you peace to go right through it, amen? Look, many Christians were involved in the Holocaust. They were helping Jewish people. Uh, Corey Tim Boone is one. Hiding, hiding uh, Jewish people, protecting them. And then afterwards, when the, when the allies came in, the, the Germans were running and they helped them also. We as Christians have to forgive because that's what Jesus Christ has told us to do. Not always easy, church family. Back to it. Scripture must be fulfilled. It has to be. So if you read it in your Bible, it is going to happen. What did they say? 28, 29% of the Bible is prophetic. A lot of it was fulfilled at Jesus' first coming. But much more is going to be fulfilled at his second. At the rapture of the church, the catching up the second coming, and what goes on in between that, 
rapture of the church and the second coming. Seven years there that it talks about what's going to go on in our world. And it ain't going to be pretty. So if you ain't born again, not good English, but you know what I'm saying, then you better be born again tonight. Because that trumpet could sound even now and we can be gone. Amen, church family? All right, let's continue on. Scripture must be fulfilled. Say it with me. Scripture must be fulfilled. Write it down. Scripture must be fulfilled. Let me, let me get back to my point here, verse 12, verse 13. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. Let me tell you, when a person gets born again, they get joy. Oh my goodness. I, think about this. I'm hell bound. I'm going to hell. If I don't receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I'm going to hell. Hell is a real place. There are people down there right now. Isaiah says, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the great, the dead. There are great people in hell. There are ungreat people in hell. Every great person in hell right now is not great no more. Look, you can be the richest person on planet earth, but if you end up in hell, you're the poorest person on planet earth. Amen, church family? You can be the poorest person on planet Earth. You can be a, one of the children on the garbage dumps of, of India. But if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're the richest person on planet Earth. Amen? Every day I read a little, little devotional. It's from the Voice of the Martyrs. And it's just different testimonies of martyrs that have given up their lives for Christ. And some of them, you know, having their skin taken off, being, being put in the fire, having their tongues chopped out so they wouldn't speak the word of God as they were dying. We know what went on in the Colosseums. They would put women out there, some of them out there naked to be shows for these people and put bulls out there and lions out there and different animals. But they died in that one second when they died. They became the richest person. up. They were richer than those emperors. They were richer than those Caesars. They were richer than those rich people in Rome that were shouting for their death, the gladiators, and on and on. Church family, we are the richest people on planet Earth. Jesus Christ, he was made poor that we might be made rich. Amen. And I thank God. In America, we are the richest people on planet Earth. We have beautiful homes. We have beautiful cars. We have TVs in just about every room. We got air conditioning, heat, food beyond words, supermarkets, anything you want. They don't got that around the world. We are rich in this nation because we are a Judeo-Christian nation. But church family, let me tell you, if they get rid of that, you are going to see such devastation in this nation. It's going to blow you away. Communism never worked. Marxism never worked. Socialism never worked. Any place that took God out never worked. Look at the Soviet Union. They said that you went and saw paintings there, great paintings. They didn't want to destroy these great works of art. One painting was Lazarus being raised from the dead, and they put a little gold plaque at the bottom. It says, the fairy tale of Lazarus being raised from the dead. Look at them. What happened to the former Soviet Union? What happened to Lenin? What happened to Stalin? What happened to all these people? They're all gone. Now the, the Soviet Union's having revival there, amen? I remember a prophet of God gave a word many years ago, and he said, I saw this big snake, and God said to me, that snake represents communism. And God spoke to him, and he saw the snake get chopped, and he saw two-thirds of the tail disappear. And he heard, I'm going to take two-thirds of people that were in communist nations up in the rapture. And that had to be, oh, dear Lord, I saw it in Madison Square Garden, New York. Had to be 10 to 15 years before the Berlin Wall came down, before the Soviet Union went out. And we're seeing through great ministries out, out in Russia and, and different St. Petersburg and on and on, people being born again. Church family, when that rapture happens, we are going to be shocked at how many people go up, amen? When the catching up of the saints happen, we are going to be shocked how many people go up in the rapture. Hey, I don't know about you. I'm going to be one of them. If you're going up, would you type there? Hashtag, look it up, look it up. Our redemption draws nigh, amen? I better keep going on here. We're never going to get through this, through this uh, chapter. 
verse uh, 13. So we get joy. It keeps coming to us. Verse 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Can I get an amen on that? Oh, man, let me tell you. Can I tell you something, church family? When the catching up of the saints happens, when the rapture happens, there is going to be dancing in the streets. You remember over in Palestine and all when, uh, when the, the World Trade Center came down, they were all dancing around. As the Jewish people were in sorrow, they were dancing around. And, and they're going to be dancing. We got rid of them. We can do anything we want now. We can have presidents and prime ministers. They're going to be in for a mighty big shock. They're going to be in for a shock to his family. That's why we pray, because we want to bring as many home out of here beforehand. Now, many will be saved during the Great Tribulation. Remember, the Great Tribulation is Jacob's sorrow. It's not the church's sorrow. We're not going to be here. Scripture is extremely clear on that, but many will be left behind. Amen? All right? Anyway, they'll hate us because of that. Verse 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them or guard them from the evil one. We have and we will have until he returns his protection. We actually have God's very armor, the armor that Jesus wore. Let me show you to Turn to Isaiah 59, and let me just show you the scripture here in verse 16. This is Old Testament, right? And it says this in Isaiah 59 and verse 16. God saw, he saw that there was no man and wondered that there were no intercessors. Church, be an intercessor, be a person of prayer. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him and his own righteousness sustained him. This is Jesus, the arm of God, right? For he put on righteousness as a breastplate put the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and he was clad with a zeal as cloak, right? Now go, go to Ephesians 6.13. Ephesians 6.13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and have done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and being watchful to this end with all perseveration, preservation, supplication for all Saints, do you see a church family? The armor that Jesus wore, we now wear. We have the armor of God. Verse 16, they are not of this world just as I am not of this world. When it talks about world there, it's talking about the world system. We are not of this world system. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change the way you think. I believe that's the way the New Living Translation says. Change the way you think. Don't think like this world. Don't go looking at the styles of this world that have everything hanging out. Say, I'm going to dress nice, but I'm going to dress with a modesty. I'm not going to put things on so tight that every, every little groove is being shown. I'm not saying I look like an old lady, or you know, but what I'm trying to say is we should have a modesty. We should have an appearance of ourselves that is proper. Amen? Keep going on here. Verse, uh, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Now watch. How are we sanctified or how are we made holy? We are made holy by the truth. And he says, thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. The more word you get in you, the more sanctified you become. Sanctified is done on the outside. We are made righteous on the inside. Our spirit man is just like Jesus' spirit man if you're born again. But the outside still got some problems. It might still curse. It might still yell. It might still this or that or whatever. He tells you to sanctify it. And the only way you're going to be able to sanctify it 
is through the truth, through the word. As you have sent me, verse 18, into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. And that's where we're going to stop, church family. But here's what he's saying. He sent this in the world. Next week, what we're going to read, we're going to pick up right at that next verse where it says, I don't pray for them only, for, but for all them that believe on me through them. Here you got these guys, these apostles. Jesus said, they're going to have a special throne. Their, their names are going to be written on those walls. These are a unique group of guys, these, these 11. I believe Paul was the 12th. You know, I know Peter did the little drawing of the straw there and, and picked the one guy to be that one, but I, I don't believe he was. You don't hear nothing about him, amen? But you hear a lot about Paul writing two-thirds of the epistles. Even P Peter said, hey, this guy Paul, his sayings may be hard, but listen to him. He's right on, right on. So read the epistles, read the letters, read Ephesians, Colossians, Galatians, Philippians, on and on. Read the letters of Paul. But here he sent them out into the world. I know I heard Thomas was stabbed in Spain. Peter was crucified upside down. Andrew was crucified li like an X like this. They, they went, the only one that wasn't martyred was John. And he got to write the book of Revelation. And church history says they put him in a boiling pot of oil and he came out home and it flipped the Caesar out, the, the, the emperor out, flipped them out that they sent them to this island of Patmos just to get him out of there. And what happens when he's on the island of Patmos? He receives the book of Revelation or the letter of Revelation or the revelation of Jesus Christ, our soon coming king. Church family. I am looking up. I hope you're looking up. I hope you see what's going on in our world. We knew something was going to happen in this election. There was no if, what's, or buts about it. We knew that we knew that we knew. We hoped one way, but we knew something was going to go wacko. And now we'll see how this all ends out. Pastor, who do you want to win? I want God's will to be done because Scripture must be fulfilled. Amen? Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you again that your word does not return void, but it accomplishes that which it sent for it to do. Thank you for your holy word, Father. In Jesus' name, if you're here tonight and you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord, to be your Savior, and you'd like to do that tonight, then pray this prayer with me. Say this with me. My dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I repent, I turn, Lord. I turn away from them, Lord. I want to live for you. And I thank you, Lord, that when I make a mistake, the blood of Jesus washes me white as snow. Thank you that I am born again heaven bound, and that I can say now, I am looking up, my redemption draws nigh. Dear Lord, if you're here tonight and you've made that decision, let us know. Please call the church. Say, I made that decision on, on December 2nd. Or, or, or right there, revbob at cffchurch.org. And come visit us on Sunday, amen? We have, we have uh, social distancing. We got all that going on. Come and visit us so that you can get into the word and get into the atmosphere of the believer. Amen? God bless you. Father, I just thank you for this evening. Thank you that we could spend time together. We could have communion. We could pray together. We can get into the word. We can worship you, Lord. We could give unto you. Thank you for your blessings, the blessings of the Lord. It makes us rich, and you add no sorrow for, to it, Lord. I thank you again that you have made us the head and not the tail above only and not beneath that in all my ways and endeavors, that we are greatly blessed, highly favored, deeply loved, that we are blessed to be a blessing. Church family, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. See you Sunday, 9 and 11.